for the fight fans joining us and the millions watching around the world. Yes, ladies and gents, welcome back to In The Red Corner podcast with me, Ross. I hope all is well. Tonight, I'm joined by Robbie Brown, live in the red corner, round 39. Here he is, I'll bring him in now. Yes, Robbie, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? All good, my mate. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate you coming on, pal. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, how are things then? How, how are things after the fight? Have you, do you, I mean, did you sustain any damage? Have you healed up all right? No, I don't think he um, he landed a punch. And my hands are fine. Back in the gym already, so things are good. Excellent. And back at work as well. Straight yeah. into things. No rest for you. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to the start a little bit with you, Robbie, if that's all right. Um, you know, boxing is where it all started for you. So, you know, obviously you, you've been around the block. you fought on many different... Uh, promotions and things like that, King of the Streets, Cage Steel, now the BKFC, you've, you've done left way, I mean, underground fighting, it doesn't matter to you, does it? doesn't matter how big, how small. <laughs> I think I've fought in every discipline you can think of. Yeah. I mean, if it's competition, I've done it at some point. You've been over to Thailand mm -hmm. and fought over in Thailand as well. Yeah, yeah, twice. So it's been a good experience, all, all the fighting I've done. Definitely. Um I was watching some of your fights and things, and you know, your, your Brazilian Jiu Jitsu looks like spot on. It looks slick as fuck. Um, the armbar that you caught uh, the kid with in cage steel that you put on the last, like, what did you tap it with five seconds left of the first round or something? Yeah, and, just put a couple of seconds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the way you took that lad's back in uh, King of the Streets and got the rear naked choke as well. Yeah, he was, he was a, people are saying he was just a kickboxer, but he had 11 uh, pro MMA fights as well, so. He was definitely he definitely done a lot of jujitsu. I mean, he only won four four out of the eleven, but he was still winning. Yeah, so, brilliant, mate. So boxing first for you was that? Did you do it at an amateur level or anything, or was it just something that you took up for the crack? Um, I just done it through. I started in school when I was about fourteen, fifteen. Um, done it for a couple of months, maybe a year, um, and then I found out about a kickboxing gym that was close by. Um, and then moved on from there, kickboxing, MMA. So, yeah, nice one. Sorry, just got big Jack Draper in the uh, in the comments there. Robbie looked disappointed. Ben didn't put much of a fight. Can't wait to see what Robbie can do in the BKFC. Uh, Jack Draper, the big heavyweight there. You know. Yeah, I was, I was disappointed. Backflip, Ben. <laughs> um, I was going to say, are you disappointed with, well, disappointed in uh, that Ben didn't give you much more of a fight or... But I was confident I was going to win, but I thought I was going to get a tough first round. I thought he was going to come swinging for two minutes. Um, and I think one of the times I hit him, he, he, and one of the times he went down, I, I don't even think I landed, I landed the punch. And then his legs came up in the air, and it was like like he'd done a backflip. It's his nickname now, Backflip Ben. <laughs> what a little whopper he is, man. Just embarrassing for me as well, though. Like, people are saying, oh, he's took a dive, but... It wasn't the case. I like he, he was there to fight, but yeah, yeah. I mean, you took the shot, the fight on short notice, uh, and Ben obviously took the fight on short notice as well. Did you have much of a training camp for it? Or are you just always in the gym keeping yourself busy? No, I was um, I was away in France working on the the wind turbines, um, and then I signed with Big FC, and then I asked to get on the Newcastle card. Um, yeah. And then they found me Andy Walsh, but fortunately he, he got injured in a fight a couple of weeks before. I think it was like a week or two out. And then Ben Hatchett stepped in and said that he'll, he'll fight me. He's been wanting to fight for ages as well. Um, I just expected more from him. Yeah. You've had a bit of a back and forth before, I think, haven't you? Didn't you comment on one of his um, profile or one of his pictures or something saying that you and him would be a good fight? 
Yeah, that's when he was winning. He was winning a couple of fights. I think he was about like six and two or five and two or something like that. So I thought, oh, that's a, like, he's had a good following. So I thought, my first proper bare knuckle boxing fight, thought that'd be a good win. It was like a very winnable fight. So I thought, oh, yeah, that, that'd be nice. Um, yeah. so I, mean, I didn't just try to, to make it happen. We were talking, I was talking to Lou the other night. On the, on the show that we've done and it was you know working out i think ben's fought on pretty much every bare knuckle promotion that there's, there is going yeah i think he's just going around getting knocked off everyone on every show isn't he <laughs> <laughs> everyone's having a go yeah uh after the fight then um john or came into the ring which i've not seen the bkfc do before uh there was a nose to nose with you and him he's wanting to fight you yeah do you know yeah, much about yeah. john then I know he's a good tie boxer, but yeah. his hands are shit. Like I'm watching his fights, and you know what? I was going to be respectful to him, but he's uh, he's putting silly stuff on his Instagram. How he doesn't think it's going to be a war and all this, and you know what? He's probably he's right because I'm going to punch his fucking head in. <laughs> like he's a stiff. He just walks forward. He thinks he he said to me, "Yeah, uh, I'm just going to walk forward and headbutt your hands. Good luck with that, mate. I'm not even going to hit your forehead." <laughs> <laughs> just walk, like one of the fights that I watched, he didn't even throw a punch or a kick. He was just walking forward, taking a beating. And that's exactly what he's going to do in this fight. I'm going to punch his head. In. He, and he's irrelevant as well. Me fighting him doesn't do anything for me. The fight that I want is Gary Fox. So I'll get John out the way and then me and Gary will get it on. Yeah. I put a little, well, me and Luke both put a little poll up um, on our Instagrams the other day in the Red Corner podcast on the Instagram and I think it was about 70-30 in, in your favour. I think it'd be a lot closer, personally. I yeah. think you'd both cause problems for each other, and I think it'd be a hell of a war. Gary, obviously, he's been around the block. You know, he's an ex-professional boxer, and uh, he knows what he's doing. He's had many bare knuckle fights, and uh, I think it'd be, I think that fight would be an amazing fight. Yeah, he's, he's tough, and he'd be hard to put away. Um, I do think I'll get the job done. Like, I am confident. In that fight, but I do like him as well. I mean, if the fight does get built, we'll have a bit of back and forth, and you know, we'll make it exciting for people. But I do like him, and we're friends, so yeah, you know, we'll we'll get in there, we'll have a good fight, we'll we'll have a pint, and we'll shake hands. I just wish it was him instead of Jono because Jono is irrelevant. Nobody even knows who he is. Like it's going to be hard to tell that fight. Whereas the Gary Fox fight, like everybody wants to see that. My phone blew up. I was walking around my. Like the town that I live in, people were asking me about it. Brother. You, you mentioned Jono, and everyone's like, who's that? Some little old man with a goatee and a bald head. <laughs> He's going to get slapped about. <laughs> <laughs> like I say, I think you and you and uh, Gary, like, you know, he's a top lad. I've met Gary a few times and seen him at work and things like that. And uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's been over here. Nice train- yeah, he's been over here training with Gary, uh, Danny Christie a few times and stuff. and. I've been fortunate to, fortunate enough to watch them spar and things, and uh, you know he's he's good. I think, like I say, you and him together would do it'd be an amazing war, yeah, something that we all want to see. Um, yeah. so have you watched the uh, your fight back then with Ben Atchett? Yeah, I've watched it a couple of times. Yeah, and it's I try. I've been trying to take a clip, you know, where it looks good, and the only time it looks good is when I'm telling him to get up. Yeah, <laughs> you know, when you're trying to like take little highlights for your, the Instagram and to put it on yeah. Facebook, but it's just embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for him, and then he has he has the cheat to go on Facebook and call him, call me a, a clown or a mug, saying that he only had two weeks' notice. I mean, you can use that as an excuse when you've had like like a five round war and you just gas, but not when you're just doing backflips twenty seconds in. Yeah, I mean the fact that he had two weeks' notice, you only had two weeks' notice as well. To be fair, so. Yeah, you can use that excuse when it, when you do when you get dropped four times in thirty seconds. Yeah, you can, you can use it if you if you're gassing but you're still in the fight. And yeah, you you haven't had enough training. You need to train more, but not not doing backflips around the around the ring, throwing yourself on the floor crying. Oh, I broke my jaw, and you eat the steak after. What a little whopper! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, did you, did you learn anything about yourself from that fight at all, or? Um. I just, I'm glad I got in there and got the feel of it. I wish I got more ring time. Um, but, you know, it's got away, it's got rid of some nerves and, you know, being on the big stage. Um, I think I'll be a little bit more com- more comfortable next time. Yeah. 
Is that? It, it, I mean, the beef, BKFC production level is just it, it's unbelievable what they do with the shows and things. And uh, is that kind of the biggest stage you fought on then? I would say so. Yeah, um, it was really good run. It was a like crazy show. Um, and yeah, it was really good, and I'm excited that you know to to continue with them. Yeah. Um, do you think you do you think you make the BKFC your home then, rather than going back into MMA? Or yeah, I'm still training MMA. Um, I'm still going to train MMA. I'm probably not going to fight MMA for the, probably the rest of this year. Maybe it's next year. So I want to see how far I can take with BKFC. Um, you know, there's big plans. There's not many people around my weight. So, you know, a couple more wins, and I'm pretty sure they're going to have me over the over in America fighting for titles. Yeah. And as well, I'm, I'm up and down a weight. So you've got Reggie Barnett, who I think's really good, but it's a very winnable fight. Uh, that's at 135. And then the 145, that Kai, I think he's absolutely terrible, and I would take that belt with one hand strapped behind my back. I think he's awful. I've seen you called out John Dodson as well, someone that you've kind of admired for a long time, watched for a long time. Yeah, that's like a very respectful call out. And, you know, if, I, if I've if i got five or six wins in Big FC, then there's no reason why they wouldn't make that fight. Um, I've been watching him since I first started. Do you know, like, he's amazing. Like, I love him. So to uh, share the ring with him would be insane. So that's like, that's not like, I want to fight you kind, kind of call out. It's just like, fucking hell, I could be fighting this guy at some point. Yeah. It'd be amazing to share the, the ring with him and spill oh, love definitely. with him because of the admiration that you've got for him. Yeah, and, and as well, like imagine if I do put up a good fight and end up getting the win, I get over John Dodson. That's like, that's yeah. just a crazy achievement. Yeah, I mean, I remember watching him in the UFC and things and the Ultimate Fighter and all that carry on. And yeah, yeah, well, he's fought Mighty Mouse, Mighty Mouse twice. Yeah, still both fights went the distance as well. So yeah, it took them both all the way. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, so did you earn yourself? A, have you got a contract with the BKFC, or have you earned yourself a contract now after the last win? Um, it's a three-year contract. Uh, I, I think I might be wrong, um, but they do let me fight MMA if I want to or kickboxing. Yeah. So that's that's one of the reasons why I went with them as well because of how like flexible you are and the, the they don't just hold you hold you there and you've got to just fight for them like. They're allowing you to go and do other things as well, which is perfect, really. I know some promotions are just strictly for them, and I just didn't want to be tied into anything long term. Yeah. So. Be good for you because I think you'd probably fight every week if you could, would you? Oh, definitely. And all the people that are calling me out. I mean, there's not enough days in the year to fight everyone. Yeah. <laughs> is, that that just, is that just the keyboard warriors? Or is that real fighters as well? Yeah, there's real fighters as well. Um, but I can't fight everyone, so if anybody wants to know where I train, they can come down and we can have three rounds in the ring of the cage. <laughs> Not a problem, any one of them. <laughs> um, so, I mean, if you if you went back into the MMA and things like that, would you look at the uh, UFC eventually? Or? Um, no, nah, I, don't, I don't think I'm good enough to, to get there. Um, my pro record in MMA is one and two. Um I definitely think I could get to a big promotion, especially with the following I've got. Um, I mean, there's been some MMA, local MMA shows that are offering me big money. I mean, Cage Steel offered me like quite quite a big purse. Yeah. Um, to fight for them, which is more than what I've just got for that fight. I'm not going to say what it is, just in case they don't want me to say what I got. Yeah, or what yeah. Thingy, but it was quite a big purse, which is surprising because um, I thought they were just like quite a, quite a little show, but. I must have some money because they did offer me a, a decent decent wedge. So respect to them, but I am going to turn that down because I want to follow. I've got a new dream now in in burn up a boxing. Yeah, but like you say, it's nice to have that flexibility with the BKFC to kind of nip into that if I dip your toes in that, or if you if you really wanted to. So I mean, is the John O'Chip Chase fight set in stone? Then that's definitely your next fight. Um. No contracts have been signed, but obviously he's got into the ring. We've both verbally agreed. Um, so I'm guessing so. I've asked for the Gary fight and they've promised the 
just promised him that fight. So yeah, like I'm, I'm the type of guy that just go, goes with it. Put someone in there, I'll turn, give me a date, and I'm going to turn up. Yeah, is that going to be this year? Then the John O'Chip Chase fight, you know, October, the end of October in Leeds. Date to be confirmed, but it's looking like the very end of last weekend in October. Brilliant, mate. Uh, I'm sure we're all looking forward to seeing you out there again and, and putting on a performance. Um, I mean, there's a possibility of two shows. Is that too many for you? I think there's one September and October. I'd fight uh, at, at the Wembley. I think it's Wembley, is it? I, I don't know. No, no, nowhere's been confirmed yet. Oh, so, no. There might be rumours then, but yeah, I would fight on every single show if I could, if they would let me. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you would, mate. Every single one of them. <laughs> so you were I tried to get you on uh, was it last week I think you were away in Glasgow or something the Wi-Fi was crap at your hotel but you've been uh, walking around Glasgow and getting stopped and people wanting photos with you and things yeah it's gone crazy I've took like probably I would dare say over 100 photos now since since the fight <laughs> like crazy people um, are asking for signed photos and stuff yeah. I never thought I'd plan anything in my life <laughs> <laughs> Is it a different feeling than fighting on the BKFC platform to, you know, can you explain the feeling at all? Um, I still get the same nerves as what I do when I had my very first fight. The nerves, like, don't go away. You just learn to control them better. So I am pretty relaxed and I just try and enjoy the moment. Yeah. Um, but it was a good experience, you know, like I still felt the nerves and still felt, you know, scared and stuff. So it was good. Brilliant. And uh, you were saying about your, your phone blowing up and things like that. You had Joe Rogan in your inbox. Uh, you've been yeah. chatting with him recently. Yeah, he was asking like loads of questions about... I thought I was going to get a mention on the Mike Perry podcast, but it never happened. Because when he was asking the questions, it was a couple of days before he'd done the podcast with Mike. Um, so I thought the timing's too good to be true. Maybe I'll get a mention, but it never <laughs> happened. I also asked him uh, for a good luck video for my fight, and he read it and didn't reply. Do you know? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Maybe but he next probably time. a million of them, doesn't he? So yeah, hey, just been able to speak to him whenever you want and kind of thing, and and he, him replying when he did and stuff like that. I mean, it's got to be an amazing yeah. feeling for you. I've been a fan of him for years and years and years. So, and everybody loves him. So just have him follow me, never mind message me as well. As yeah, it's really like it's amazing. I always wish that he'd at least once fought in the UFC because, like, when you see him training stuff like that, he's, he's unbelievable. He's like, his kicks, he? his spinning back kick and that that he does. I've seen uh, an interview when he, people asked why he didn't fight in the UFC and he said, I wouldn't pass a drugs test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's brilliant. I know you've got a lot of sponsors and things, probably too many to shout out, but is, is there any coaches or... Jim's teammates that you want to shout out? Yeah, just my team at TFT for all the work over the past couple of years. And uh, there's a there's a, one of my friends, um, boxing coach Will Rochester, who's just, you know, took all his time out on an evening just to to work with me, footwork. Um, he's, been, he's been great. So thanks to all them as well and my family for, you know, letting me do all it. Yeah, brilliant. It's a big sacrifice on your family as well. It's not just you that, you know, yeah, you do all the training and put all the time in, but... They put time in as well for everything, don't they? Yeah, especially when I work away as well. So I work away, so I'm away most of the time. And then when I'm home, I'm training. So, you know, to be a, to not get more than that when I'm doing that. All right. Yeah. Brilliant. It's good to have that, you know, I mean, Jack's got it. Jack Draper's got it with his wife. You know, she's so supportive of him, which is a beautiful thing to see, you know. And, you know, as a very family orientated person. Um, and to have that support of your family and your friends and stuff, it's uh, it's a nice feeling. It's helpful, isn't it? Because it's a hard sport to be in, you know. So to try and do it while getting mourned at or, you know, getting shit at home will be, be difficult. So to have people there that support you, it just makes it a whole lot easier. Yeah. Do you think you'll you'll travel around a bit and maybe do some sparring with some different lads in the in the bare-knuckle world? Yeah, definitely. Um, I haven't looked too much into that yet. Um but I will when this comes starts, I'll start messaging guys and trying to get some extra work in. So, yeah, people that have had a lot of experience in bare knuckle, well, it's, it's hard around my weight because, I mean, I, I've, I've been fighting a 66 kilo, um, but I only walk around about 63, 64. 
Right. So, like, I'm not even cutting weight for it. Yeah. Uh, my natural fight weight is 56 kilo, which is far too small for, like, bare knuckle. I don't think anybody anybody's fighting bare knuckle at that weight, so... No, not yet. Not yet. I mean, I'm sure it'll come over time, but, you know, it's kind of like where the UFC was, you know, 15, 20 years ago. They only had a few weight classes, and then as more yeah. fighters come in and get on the roster, that the, the weight classes will come as well, so... Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just going to have a look at some of the comments here, see if anyone's got any questions. Um, you know, did he take a dive? Look, there's no one in the BKFC takes a dive or is paid to take a dive. Yeah, definitely not. You know, the BKFC is far too uh, big of an organisation to be doing that Very shit. Like that. Especially uh, for someone like me as well. Why would they, why would they do that? Yeah, yeah. It's not like... I'm this massive name that they're trying to build up. It's just they've got a little bit of following and now I'm just trying to make it in bare knuckle. Yeah. You know, like, so I say that I took a dive, it's, it's stupid. Stupid. Yeah, stupid. ridiculous. Really, yeah. Um, Jack Raper, what's next for Robbie? Well, we'll kind of covered that. I've got John or Chip Chase first, but anyone and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> And then he put John who. <laughs> Nobody knows him. Yeah. Get rid of uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> What's this one? Yes, Russell Johnson's great fight, both lads. All the best. I mean, the support you know that you're getting. Be good for the John O fight. If they put me and Gary on, and then John O fought someone else, he smashes his opponent, and I'll be Gary, then it would have been a bigger fight. And then there's yeah. two bigger fights rather than this fight, that's not going to be a big fight. And then the next one, I would have had two big fights if he fought someone first and smashed them. Do you know if he's as good as what he's saying he is? Yeah, yeah. It would have been to, to build it into something big. Um, yeah, that would be the better option. So, I don't know. I, I've tried to get the fight changed around, but I don't think it's going to happen. No, the, I mean, the BKFC will probably have their idea for you. It might be different to yours, but like you say, your fight doesn't, doesn't matter. You'll fight whoever's put in front of you on you, so... And, yeah, and as well, if they promised him the fight and then they'd just be like, oh, by the way, you're not fighting him now. It's just, it looks a bit shit on them as well, doesn't it? So, yeah, well, like, maybe you were the key, maybe you were the key to bringing him over to bare knuckle as well. So, yeah, yeah, because he's got a big following in tie boxing, but nobody knows who he is in this world. So, I obviously, Bakewell's, um, you know, from a tie background, so he knows him quite well. I know yeah. Liam Harrison speaks highly of him as well. Um, so he definitely is good, but he, his hands don't look like he looks good in the bag and the pads. But when I've watched his fights, he I don't think he's gonna trouble me. Yeah, got uh, mitts up TV in the comments there. Foxy will be a long night's work for Robbie, I imagine it going all the way. Like I say, I think definitely be a tough fight, but obviously, I am confident, and I think the way to be Foxy is move, move, yeah. hit and move. Yeah, that was Nathan Hines' plan for for Fox's first fight, but I think uh, I think Fox's came down three weights since then, three weight classes since then or something. So I think he's about one four five now. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. what that is in kilos or stone, but um, sixty five k. Is it? Yeah, yeah. So it's roughly your roughly your weight. Do you have to put weight on then to make that? Do you have to. I just I, I'm like a pudgy sixty six. Yeah, I think I'm the only. Um... I mean, I think I'm the only guy that doesn't have abs at 66 kilo. I <laughs> was <laughs> ridiculous. But you're always keeping yourself busy and ticking over, though. Yeah, always, yeah. You were saying, like, off camera before, you know, although you work offshore, there's a gym and there's, there's boxers that work on the offshore with you as well, so you, you're yeah, always yeah. keeping yourself in there. Even when I was in Finland, I was... Uh, Train him with a with an MMA guy, so there's always something he can be doing. Yeah, or you know at least staying fit. So, well, nice one, mate. Look, I won't take up much more of your time. We appreciate you coming on, Robbie. Uh, thank, thank you very much, me. and big bright future ahead of you, mate. And I can't wait to to watch your journey. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be something special, I think. Thanks, uh, seeing you get over to America and and bringing a belt back to the UK be uh, be unbelievable. Be a dream come true. Hopefully, um. You know, somewhere nice like a Miami, Miami card. Yeah, that yeah. Be, that would be lethal. 
Yeah, get out there with Tyler Good John. Tyler Good John trains out there with uh, yeah, Palomino. Yeah, nice maybe he's um, to go out a little bit early and get some training in with him. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Should uh, hit him up on his Instagram. I'm sure he'd have you over. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If, um, if it happens, I'll I'll drop him a message and, and maybe get some sparring in. Excellent. Well, the very best of luck to you, Robbie, and, and thanks again for coming on, pal. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for having me. Keep in touch, mate. See you again. See ya. Bye. Robbie Brown, everyone. The man, the myth, the legend that is. A uh, big, bright future ahead of him, and uh, he's going to go a long, long way, I think, in this sport. No doubt about that at all. And uh, hopefully we'll see him out again before the end of the year uh, against John or Chip Chase, which seems to be the fight that's, uh, that's going to be set. But Obviously, Robbie's saying that he wants to fight Foxy, which I think could just be uh, an all-out war and a, a brilliant fight all round. Um, this week, what have I got on this week? I've got uh, Zenek Pernica coming on the podcast this week as well. So uh, look out on Instagram to see what date that's going to be. Um, like and subscribe to the channel. Like, hit the like button, jab the like button, jab the subscribe button. It goes a long way to help the content, pushes the algorithm out there and, uh, and gets it the team on. Hopefully, it can bring better content for you and, and bigger, bigger and better fighters and things like that. Want to try and get some uh, guys from the US on. So, thank you very much for everyone. Have a good night. Speak to you later. For well, the fight fans joining us and the millions watching around. Thanks to everyone in the comments as well. I appreciate everyone jumping in there. Uh, Scribs, uh, Scrags, uh, Jack Draper in there. Linesy, Dangerous Darren, I was in the comments. Appreciate it. Mitsup TV. Yeah, appreciate it all. Well,